few facts, uh, some news other old about the, the relationship between uh, time and causality. Here, I just remind what space time is, but given the time, I skip it. <laughs> so, uh, well, first of all, two events uh, are said to be chronologically related if there is a time lag curve between them. And they are said causally related if there is a causal curve between them or they are the same. They are also said arithmetically related if they are causally related but not chronologically related. And there is a theorem which states that in this case they are connected by electric theories. Well, we can regard this relationship as exactly as relation as subset of the, uh, the space-time times itself. And this gives you these sets here. And of course, the Erasmus relation is the difference between the two. This is the mistakes. The first two, the chronology and the causality relation, are transitive. Moreover, in, in general, this is a theorem which states that chronology is open. But in general, causality and uh, Erasmus are not necessarily closed. Uh, so let, let me also remind what is a partially ordered set, or more generally, we start with the pre-order, which is a reflexive and transitive relation. If we add the anti-symmetric the anti-symmetry property we, we get the partial order. But you, here also we will need what is a total pre-order, which is a pre-order which is total, in the sense that you can always compare two elements. And of course, a total uh, or linear order is a partial order which is total. Now, suppose you want to consider an abstract framework uh, for causality. What does it mean? It means uh, we uh, obtain those uh, causality relations starting from a metric, but let us forget about the metric and the conformal structure and work only with relations. So here there are two strategies. Either we work with three relations and we promote what, is, what are known to be a relationship between them in space-time. For instance, this is a relation which holds uh, in space-time. It means if I connect P to Q with the causal curve, and Q to R with a time-like curve, then there is a time-like curve from P to R. So this would be a constraint between all those three relations, and we could promote them to axioms. Or we can uh, just consider the space-time uh, in an absurd way as a manifold with a kind of only one type of relation. For instance, in causal set theory, one uses the causal relation. But here is the first uh, nice fact. None of these relations here are closed, are both closed and transitive. Closure is important because you can take limits. And uh, there is this not very well known relation called uh, the Cypher relation, which you obtain by opening the cons all over the space time, considering all the relations that you get with these kinds of operations and taking their intersection. This way you get a relation which is both closed and transitive. Uh, well, let me uh, also here report what stable causality is. Stable, especially stable causal if uh, you, you can open the cones and preserve causality. Also, we have uh, what is a time function. Uh, well, there are many concepts of, concepts of time in general relativity. There is the proper time, but there is also the time function, which is a continuous function that increases over every causal curve. This is the technical definition. For instance, any observer in, in Minkowski space-time has a, a, an associated time function. Now, for instance, this one is an example of space-time uh, uh, obtaining from Minkowski identifying two lines, removing these half lines here. So this space time here is not uh, is, is causal because you cannot cross this like that geodesic and uh, go back. But it's not stable causal because if you enlarge the cones here, if you open the cones, you can cross 
and, and connects again with uh, to your starting point. Here it seems that we have a time function, but this is not a time function. These are the slices of a function. And this is not a time function because it's not continuous here. Here I can cross from 1 to 11. So it's not continuous. In part, uh, this relation has many good properties. First, this relation here is a partial order if the space-time is stably causal. It is a partial order also uh, if and only if it admits a time function. Okay. And uh, there is this fact here. This uh, relation under stable causality is the smallest, actually, closed and transitive relation, which has the property of containing the causal relation. Uh, in technical terms, it is the same as the relation introduced by Sarkin and Walter called K plus. Well, this fact uh, seems technical, but it's very important because it, it uh, allows you to prove that if a space tank has no time function, then it is singular. Uh, non geodesically incomplete, provided you add uh, uh, the null energy condition and the null genetic condition. Another important fact uh, is that if you start fr from the time function allowed by, by the, the space-time, that there can be many, you construct this pre-order here, you take the intersection, and what you get is not the causal relation, but the central relation. <laughs> This means uh, that from the time functions of your space time, well, uh, okay, let's see if I don't have, well, from the time function of your space time, uh, you can recover not the causal relation, but the safer relations. And this is, uh, uh, this suggests that an abstract framework for causality on space time should be based on this relation, which is, which is seen to have uh, more important properties that the user has a relation. Okay, I I know I have 30 seconds. I can say a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> but because yes, you can go from causality to time because from stable causality you get the existence of time. And this is the analog of uh, a theorem which is the order extension from principle. If you have a partial order, you can extend it to a total order. But then. <laughs> Given the time function, you can go back to the partial order. And this is the analog of the result that states that every partial order is the intersection of all the total orders. The time function is now reached zero. So, great. Right. Well, thank you very much.